Hi everyone, this is Rachel Zabonik, editor of Club Solutions Magazine. Welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be talking about emerging technology trends to watch for in 2018, and we have Bill Colbert of Psycho here. Bill, are you ready to take it away? I am, thanks very much, Rachel. Thank you. All right, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being on the call today on a, a particularly cold day if you're here in the Midwest or most of the country. Um, just getting set up here. Um, as Rachel mentioned, we're gonna be talking about emerging technology trends to watch for in 2018, uh, in part, presented in partnership with Staiku and Club Solutions. Um, before we get started today, I wanted to just say a little bit about today's presenting partner. If you're not familiar and you haven't heard of Staiku, uh, Staiku is the number one rated professional 3D body scanner in the world. And if you work in the club industry, you know your business consists of selling memberships, retaining memberships, and upselling services. Uh, Staiku can impact all three of these aspects of your business while reducing your operational costs and elevating your brand. Uh, if you want to talk about quantified impact, uh, when a leading club brand tested Staiku in six locations against controlled clubs in the same area, they saw an increase in all three of their key KPIs, their assessment show rate, their close rate, and their PT sales rate uh, increased rather drastically. Um, we'll have more on 3D body scanning later on in the presentations, and I believe Raj Serene, co-founder and CEO of Staiku will also be available at the very end for questions, so uh, stay tuned for that. Um, a little bit about myself before we dive into the meat of today's presentation. That's me on the left with special guest Crosby, wearer of Smart Socks that track his vital signs, and we'll talk a little bit about Smart Socks and other clothes that keep track of your vital signs in a few slides, but I'm the founder and CEO of Treetop Growth Strategy. We're a digital marketing agency specializing in the inbound marketing and customer acquisition for club industry brands. Staiku is a client and an amazing organization. Uh, had the pleasure of spending some time with the entire team out in Los Angeles recently and um, just a fantastic group. I hope you all have the pleasure of working with them in some form or fashion here this year. I also work with other brands like One Fit Stop, Core Health and Fitness, EcoFit Networks and Vertimax. Um, I got my start in the club industry running sales and marketing for personal trainer software from 2012 until it was acquired in 2016. And prior to that, I've been working at an advertising agency here in Chicago called Leo Burnett on United Airlines and, and Allstate Insurance. But um, enough about me and my four-month-old son. Um, let's get into today's webinar topic and the big question, what is going to be coming through the door besides out of shape people uh, into your club in 2018? Uh, we're specifically going to talk about virtual reality, augmented reality, and the radical gamification of exercise, uh, the evolution of wearables and the different opportunity it presents, and what 3D body scanning means for uh, club revenue and member retention is what we will close on. So. Uh, I want to set some context for 2018 and beyond uh, by hitting on three of the trends identified in the long-standing ACSM Health and Fitness Journal Worldwide Survey. Uh, the top three trends predicted by over 4,000 health and fitness professionals for 2018 are high-intensity interval training, group training, and wearable technology. And uh, we're going to about to dive in and look at how all of these trends are very interrelated. So um, without further ado, let's let's talk about tech is changing things like that first topic, high intensity uh, interval training. Um, let's but first, let's start the conversation around AR and, and VR, two acronyms thrown around a lot used in tandem very frequently. But uh, what is the difference between the two? Um, augmented reality was what AR stands for is a mix of the real world and the virtual world. It lets people interact with both worlds and distinguish clearly between the two. Uh, the most popular use case that you may have heard of uh, would be the Pokemon Go uh, gaming phase where you are looking at your phone and your phone is using the camera to show you the real world while the app is overlaying graphics 
and gamifying your the way that you move throughout your actual neighborhood or uh, hopefully moving with just your feet. You're not playing Pokemon Go while you're driving like I did read about. Uh, very, very, very dangerous. Um, and this is going to evolve as new hardware is developed and adopted by consumers. Uh, you may remember Google Glass, which was sort of soft launched in 2012, but received a lot of negative feedback. Um, well, it's going to be very exciting to see how uh, this hardware uh, develops. Uh, a quick look at what augmented reality would look like. This is a look from Eversight's Raptor AR cycling glasses. As you can see, you would be wearing these glasses as uh, you would regular sunglasses, but they would display certain key metrics on your lenses as you are riding. So pretty cool stuff as a former competitive cyclist. Uh, very, very good to know that you don't have to look down to see that type of information. So, uh, and then by comparison, virtual reality creates an entire virtual world. Uh, in this case, it's going to be very hard to differentiate between what is real and what is not real. And for a truly immersive VR experience, you're going to need to wear a helmet or goggles in tandem with a mobile device. Um, if you haven't purchased a VR headset or don't know quite how it works. It's a combination of an app running off of your smartphone and then goggles that enable the immersive experience. So uh, the goggles are as cheap as $20. You could probably find some on, on Amazon, but you insert your phone or, or affix your phone in a, in a way that enables the glasses to create that immersive experience. So your app will launch and you will see what is on the left-hand side and then there's actually not an image I could put on the right-hand side that would do the experience justice because it is truly like you are out in this uh, seemingly medieval field and you could turn around in all directions and see graphics in all directions. So, um, it, But if you have not tried it yet and have an extra $20 after the holidays, uh, I would suggest getting a pair and, and, and trying it out. It's, it's pretty amazing what the experience is, is truly like. So, and let's talk about what I meant when I said VR takes high intensity interval training gamification to a different world. Uh, you're probably familiar with a whiteboard or a chalkboard that may have your workout of the day or the results from uh, members who have come in and performed that workout of the day or uh, this is the Orange Theory leaderboard that, that presents heart rate and vital signs in real time. Well, VR is actually turning exercise into a game. And in the graphic on the right, we see a guy wearing a fully immersive VR headset and he's actually punching at those handbags being held up by uh, the virtual Bruce Lee gentleman in the graphic. Um, group cycling um, has been all the rage lately. If you've, I'm sure there's not a person on this call who hasn't heard of Soul Cycle, but there's a company called Verzoom, which actually has a their own hardware and has uh, handlebars with eight gaming buttons. But I think what's really compelling about the type of programming that's being developed for this hardware is, in a lot of cases, it's not at all related to fitness. So, uh, for example, in these graphics, we have someone riding a horse, we have someone driving a race car, and we have someone flying on a, a white horse with wings. So. Um, and again, games being developed are range very, don't really have a whole lot to do with fitness, but you're able to exercise while being immersed in a video game of sorts. So these are all games developed on Verzoom's platform. River, I have not personally played these games yet, but River Run, you appear to be flying a uh, Black Hawk helicopter race car. You're uh, clearly driving a race car and then in jailbreak you have the option of riding a horse and then lassoing other virtual uh, cowboys um, on your screen. So uh, really, really, a really, really different way to engage your members here and, and talk about functional fitness. If you're uh, throwing a virtual lasso, that's, uh, that's going to be good for the arm. So all this is playable from this reality here where someone where you'd have people in a room, uh, any type of room in your club will probably do. But um, the two worlds between the two slides, as you can see, are, are, are much different. So, um, so what's happening is 
Uh, software developers are submitting games to an institute for, for the games to be rated. And the institute uh, is called Virtual Reality Institute of Health and Exercise. And um, this is a independent research and rating organization created to study the impact of virtual and augmented reality. Because the truth is, uh, there's a lot about VR and AR that we don't know. How it will impact human life over a extended use case is, is still unknown. So, and we'll talk about some of the uh, caution points with VR and AR here in a few slides. Um, but these ratings, what they do is they will help make certain games available because some games are not at all related to fitness. Um, it could be a little confusing as to why you'd want to play a certain game. But um, when games have a basically are able to draw a parallel between rowing, tennis, elliptical, swimming, walking, sprinting, what have you, this is going to make it easier for your members to decide how to do something that they've previously grown tired of, but now have a really cool new way to make the rowing experience more enjoyable or make the elliptical experience more enjoyable. So I believe the game in the top right that's for rowing is actually, you're like a line cook at a restaurant. So um, it'll be interesting to see which of these games really take off and uh, if there's a halo of sorts that comes out of the games being developed here. So, and games aren't just for bicycles. There's a company called Holodia that is developing content that can be done on the rowing machine, on the elliptical, on the bike. Um, and then, of course, you don't have to be on any hardware at all. So um, you can have a headset and items in your hand that enable you to go through this virtual world and, and while getting a workout. So um, I know the uh, change or the move to having open space for functional fitness has been a popular trend in the past few years. And um, I, this would be a great use case for that space. So if you're interested in offering VR fitness, this is another great way to make use of your new investment in your club. So uh, games can be broken up between light, medium, and heavy activity. So these are some screenshots from what you would see inside the headset. Um, Super Hot is a fun warm-up that encourages lots of twists, turns, and the occasional squat. It's the equivalent of a decent walk, a, a robust warm-up. Uh, raw data, immersive and stylish, another warm-up that can get as intense as you want and also allows for co-op play. Uh, and then moving on to Medium, there's Fruit Ninja VR, which is a modern classic and equivalent to some time on the elliptical. Uh, not play the original, but uh, certainly it looks very interesting. Uh, Goal Keep VR, a simple way to get your body moving and introduce some light cardio into your workout. Uh, and then when we get into heavy, we get back more into the boxing, the, the fighting aspect of, of fitness. So if uh, you're a title boxing club member out there, I happen to be one of them. This is particularly intriguing, but uh, fastest fist, your stepping stone into thrill of the fight where the real challenge is and uh, thrill of the fight builds itself is pretty darn close to real boxing and a significant challenge. Uh, the good news being that you can scale the difficulty down to allow everyone to feel the burn. Uh, other good news about this is you don't have to get actually punched in the face by this very intimidating looking virtual reality boxer. So something to look forward to for sure. Um, let's say that fitness or VR added to a traditional machine isn't really the way that you want to go. Um, if you want to reduce the, if you don't have a lot of space to work with and want to offer VR, but you know, want to minimize what new equipment you have to bring in, you might want to think about uh, literally flying into fitness with uh, the company called Icaros that enables you to get fit while having the sensation of flying. So, if you have members looking for a new way to activate their deltoids, pectorals, obliques, traps, or tr triceps, you may be interested in this type of uh, device, but very cool. And um, in a test that they did with 15 able-bodied individuals, uh, Icaros claims that caloric burn was up 30% uh, and that muscle stimulation was up 100% in the test that they did. 
And what muscles are we specifically talking about? Well, you have your traps, you have your triceps, and you have your hamstrings. Uh, and then on uh, your, your deltoids, pecs, and obliques are going to get a workout on the front of your body. Um, so some considerations for the club operator. Um, what instances might you recommend a member give flying VR a try? Um, I would base, but I mean, it would really depend on the results of your customer surveys that you're having. But uh, if you have a segment of your member base that's feeling like they're bored or maybe hasn't been to the club in a couple months, um, marketing this type of equipment may be a great way to get them to come back and, and get them to uh, re-engage with the club. Um, how can you integrate this into existing program? I think that's a really interesting question. So um, how much time on this type of machine makes sense? Um, how does it fit into whatever programming you're running is, is uh, to be seen. Um, so, but a lot of opportunity with this type of device in your club. So, so we've talked mostly about VR and AR is also still a component. Um, we should mention it's still very early days for AR and this is largely dependent on hardware development for the consumer. What makes VR more applicable to your current club situation is that VR is still largely dependent on your smartphone. So it's going to be running an app on your smartphone and the content is going to be originating from your smartphone. So uh, as you've probably adapted for your smartphone, you may or probably will eventually adapt to some sort of augmented reality viewing device, uh, which would enable things like holographic trainers, uh, further personalized workouts, new ways of workout gamification, perhaps Pokemon Go becomes something that you offer at your gym. Um, but uh, people would be chasing around uh, virtual or pseudo realistic uh, cartoons and whatnot. Um, heads up displays at the gym and then um, point of purchase advertising space. So anytime you can attract the human's eyeballs, there's going to be advertising involved and AR presents another opportunity for advertisers down the road. So something to keep an eye out as technology evolves. Um, one AR use case that we already talked about that is being done is the uh, is Eversight's Raptor AR cycling glasses, and um, this is predictive on my part and speculative on my part. But uh, if you remember back to when the Garmin was a standalone GPS device, that's sort of the stage that uh, Eversight's Raptor glasses are in. Now, I'm not saying that they will eventually be overrun by the iPhone, which will adopt some of the same technology that enables you to navigate your way with your car or, or through the city, but um, early days here still, and this is one of the most practical applications for AR, but uh, a use case that where glasses are already very common, so it makes it a little bit easier to drive that adoption. Um, and we should say that we should spend plenty of time on this slide because um, AR and VR aren't without their health risks. Um, when you're wearing a headset, members won't have a keen sense for their surroundings. So this could lead to falling, running into things, running into each other. Uh, it also has a real possibility of creating eye strain, headaches, and nausea in certain, certain people. Uh, in real life, our eyes naturally converge and focus on a point in space. And our brain is so used to this that it's coupled the two responses together. Well, virtual reality separates those, which confuses the brain. So uh, I think Walter Greenleaf, the behavioral neuro neuro neuroscientist at Stanford University's Virtual Human Interaction Lab said it most succinctly and we said, we're tricking the brain and we don't know the long-term effects of this. So uh, anytime you don't know the long-term effects of things, it warrants uh, close study, but um, definitely some things to keep in mind when you're bringing if you've decided that you want to bring this technology into your club and that you want to start working uh, with people uh, or working with members and, and helping them get fit with this technology, be sure that they're keenly aware of the side effects that may come from, from VR and uh, maybe have them try it out in a very short time frame first to make sure that they're truly comfortable uh, following through with, with the exercises. So some further consideration, uh, if you've recently invested in new group cycling or functional fitness space, uh, you know, how do you allocate space for this trend? Uh, 
do you, do you want your instructors to be the star of the class? If you look at what makes the experience of Soul Cycle so unique is the instructor is a persona, is a star, and is a pseudo celebrity within the class. With VR, that, that instructor isn't going to have that same opportunity to connect with the members of your class. So um, definitely a consideration there when you think about your overall uh, experience. Um, do you want to reserve space for special VR cycling hardware or wait for some sort of hybrid product to emerge? Uh, standard, standard consideration when you think about adding any new piece of equipment to your club floor. Um, and is VR even right for our, our membership base? If uh, you have a lot of serious athletes who are very dedicated to training their bodies, maybe it's not for you, but if not for your club, but if you have a member base that, uh, you know, maybe he's only coming in once or twice a month or goes long periods between workouts, maybe it's the right thing to make their exercise experience a little bit less painful and, and more gamified and, and more enjoyable. So. And of course, what is the real retention impact of this type of investment? So that is still yet to be seen, but um, an important consideration when de deciding whether or not you want to make this type of investment. Uh, one common concern, uh, will VR keep people in their homes and cause members to cancel? That would be really, really bad for club members, but um, yes, you can do VR workouts in the comfort of your own home, but it's, I would really encourage everyone to remember that visiting your club is still an experience and that experience is constantly being weighed against what people pay to have that experience. So from the way people are greeted to the music, to the smell of the locker room, all of these components, small or large, go into impacting a member's perception of value for what they're paying for. But you can absolutely make VR an asset and a point of differentiation and have it work for you and have it be a retention driver and something that uh, even gets people to bring their friends in. So, which is a great way to get peer to peer referral business. So I encourage everyone to look for ways to make it an asset and a point of differentiation in, in your club. So that's all we have on VR and AR. I'd, I'd like to transition the presentation now to the evolution of, of wearables, which is a, I'd venture to say an even more exciting space given the way that it's changing how human data is being collected. Um, if you're, I can't think anyone's not familiar with traditional or, or traditional as in the last five, six years, but Fitbit, Apple Watch, uh, these devices are probably how you got started with tracking your activity or tracking your heart rate. Um, in a long story short, wearables are moving from the wrist on inward all the way into the undergarment level. Bras, underwear will be able to track vital signs. Uh, and there are even inserts that will enable early detection for breast cancer, which is an extremely uh, important and uh, interesting cause. So um, I encourage you to look that up. Uh, from a club operator's perspective, though, clothing that tracks athletes activity is creating an entirely new way to quantify your own abilities and programming and performance. So uh, Athos is not only developing clothing that tracks data, but um, it's developing a platform for online training. So as the athlete works out, coaches can actually receive real time feedback on muscle activity. Um, and then there's an online training center which allowed trainers and coaches to work together or trainers and athletes to work together and optimize their training plan. So um, this is a big opportunity for a sport performance institute or a operator because you don't simply have to market your methodology anymore and um, you've developed it, you know it works and uh, platforms like Athos are actually going to be able to to, are enabling you to quantify the gains you get for athletes in an entirely new way. So, um, and there's nothing better than being able to prove through data that you have made a true impact and a true positive change for an athlete or a member. So, um, but you know, smart clothes aren't just for high performance athletes. Um, Naughty X yoga pants are pants that come with built-in haptic vibrations 
that gently pulse at the hips, knees, and ankles, and encourage you to move and hold different positions as you change the way that you are positioned. So um, Project Jacquard, which is a commuter trucker jacket, um, it allows you to interact with a variety of services, including, including music and apps, just by, say, brushing the top pocket of your jacket, uh, which is very cool. This is, a, this is a project Google has been taking on, so, and this is just coming out, or has just come out in recent days. But, um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, the Owlet Smart Sock 2, if, uh, if, you've ever had, if you've ever had the amazing experience of becoming a parent, you know how important it is to get good night's sleep particularly at the three or four month mark. And uh, this device monitors uh, an infant's vital signs so that you can rest assured that uh, there's nothing wrong with your, uh, with your little bundle of joy. So, um, so lots to come on, on the evolution of wearables. The, the, the net net is that virtually any piece of clothing that you put on your body is eventually going to be able to report data on how you're doing and, which is very exciting, um, but something that is that I want to talk about now, which is going to be much more sooner, going to be much more impactful for club operators is is 3D body scanning. So, um, and what is what is 3D body scanning? Well, in just 35 seconds, you can have millions of measurements extracted from this S400 tower that we see here on the right hand side with two millimeter accuracy. Uh, an avatar of your body would be reconstructed in 3D. Uh, and over time, you can track change attributable to diet and or exercise. So having commercial 3D body scanning in a club should help your club in a multitude of ways from engaging prospects by offering them a free initial health assessment um, it certainly seems very futuristic, and it is, and will wow people during uh, a walking tour. Uh, it really improves the value proposition in enrollment packages. If you add this in as a value add, you can increase the perception of value around a certain uh, package price point and, and increase your sales. Um, you can also leverage positive results in in club marketing. You can tell the story of and, and, and tip your hat to a member who has made amazing progress at the hands of understanding their true shape and then having taken action through diet and exercise to, to get, you know, get the shape that they want. So, and then progress reports are really great for peer-to-peer -peer referrals. There's nothing more exciting than making a positive body change. And when that can come through to a member in a, in a PDF format or in a screenshot format, they're going to be able to share that great result with friends and family and, potentially even uh, bring people into your club uh, on a recommendation from the undeniable results that they achieved. Um, so it, I don't think it's any secret that there's a growing epidemic uh, of obesity and overweightness, particularly uh, in America. 13% of people are listed as obese, 39% overweight. This is a fairly startling statistic that would make almost four out of six people in some, by some definition, uh, unhealthy. Um, and are we helping people lose fat? Well, there are promises clubs make to members. We will help you reach your goals. We are results driven. We will improve your lifestyle. But, um, the, but it has been hard to quantify that type of change until now, until you've had the opportunity to truly show them with their own two eyes in the, in the real reality that they have changed the way that their body is shaped. And, you know, customers are gravitating to models that deliver great experiences, but also drive results. Um, it's just not an, you know, the, I go a few, I go a few times a week and bounce around in machines is that's not really the, that's not really going to retain you members long-term. It's going to be a combination of an amazing, experience and a transformational change in the way someone looks, feels, and lives their life. Um, retention comes from results-driven experiences uh, is the bottom line. Um, and you're probably familiar with some of these existing methods which fail to demonstrate 
results. These are all legacy methods of, of checking your body composition, but um, they're all fairly invasive and accurate, not repeatable, one dimensional, and I don't, no one's going to get excited. You, you can't really, well, you could, I, I would never want to take on the challenge, but um, having these types of procedures done to assess your body composition isn't really that marketable. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think people are going to get excited and come in your club to have uh, calipers pinched onto their skin. So it creates a poor experience and um, 3D body scanning certainly provides a much better non-invasive uh, discrete way to understand where you are now and help you understand what you have to do to get where you want to be tomorrow. Um, 3D body scanning is, as I mentioned, non-invasive, extremely accurate, so accurate that uh, clothing tailors are taking to the technology so that who live and die by uh, millimeters when they're making clothes. Um, it's repeatable, highly visual, three-dimensional, creates very simple metrics that can be communicated to a member so that they understand uh, some specifics. They don't have to be a dietitian or a master trainer to understand the metrics that are uh, being tracked about their body. And um, they have new metrics that they can look at and, and work towards. Um, extremely marketable and just creates an overall better experience for your club when you can get people from the start and have them come into your club and, and, and take a definitive snapshot of where they are when they started at your club. Um, so once the scan is taken, there's of course the software experience that a member and employee at your club will work together to view. but you can rotate in and pan and zoom in on your 3D model a lot in the same way as you might assess a new car if you've ever gone through a new car building app on a website. You can spin it around, you can look underneath, you can look all around. Um, and for the vast majority of people coming in your club, this is gonna be the first time that they've ever seen their body in this light. So uh, it's been described as very humbling, a very humbling experience and, and a true wake up call to those who are in such poor health by virtue of their lack of exercise and poor diet that uh, it enables, there, there's really no hiding the truth with this type of technology, but it enables a much more honest and open conversation. So, 3D body scanning, if you do weight loss challenges or any type of, of, of week or month long challenge or a, you know, X number of weeks, X number of months, what have you, um, it plays, it, it really takes this type of activity that your members may already be taking a part of and really loving to a whole new level because now you can have competitions and you can quantify and you can reward people based on numbers quantified gain, uh, unlike before, which is before and after photos are inherently subjective, but that's not the case at all with 3D body scanning. It's, it's completely numerical based and quantifiable. Um, these are example of the overlay before and after scans that you would get. So one is obviously a side profile, the other is a top down look at how your body has changed. And this is the genesis for being able to extract numerical values associated with the change in your body. So extremely motivating too when you can get this level of detail and because sometimes depending on the time of day, the, the, you know, the, the, a scale is inherently inaccurate. You may be just not feeling very good for whatever reason. It can impact how you perceive your body in the mirror, but um, 3D body scanning and being able to see this type of diagram uh, negates that and, and brings the truth out. So. Um, and as I mentioned before, the measurements are very easy for people to understand and because it's tracked in their account over time, um, it's very easy to understand how a lot of unique measurements have changed over time. So this isn't something that someone will have to scribble down on a napkin or that you'll have to write and they'll have to, you know, that they'll stick in their top drawer in their kitchen and then grab when they go back to the gym next week. It, it's all in a cloud-based portal that can be accessed on 
any hardware device. So members are going to be able to go home and after they looked at their scan, they're gonna be able to log back in and, and see and basically view their progress or, or you know, share screenshots of, of their progress with their friends and family. So it's a fantastic way for you to gain as a club operator to gain the benefit of having actually helped a member. Um, and Staiku is providing, or Staiku and 3D body scanning technology is providing the ability to do it, but you as the club operator who facilitated the scan and facilitated the onboarding process are going to be credited and thought of in a higher regard if you can truly help people see quantifiable change in their body. So um, a little bit about Staiku, uh, over 300,000 scans uh, in 600 sites worldwide, truly a global company with a global reach. Uh, I think that's every continent, except for possibly the North and South Pole, but um, almost anywhere in the world you can go, you can find a Staiku and, and find a place to get scanned. Um, and a case study with Gold's Gym, Gold's Gym was the aforementioned uh, major club brand, but Psyche was tested in six locations. It was tested against the competition and the results, the improvements in key club metrics were undeniable. The show rate increased by 20%. Uh, the close rate increased um, by 122% and uh, personal trainer sales, 150% uh, increase. So not small numbers, not insignificant numbers. Um, if you're you know, in a position where closing more personal training sales would make or break your financial quarter, your financial month, these are serious considerations to take into account when you think about how are we going to grow this business? How are we going to you know, expand our business or, or uh, even exit our business if we want? So, um, Many, many clubs have actually reallocated a dedicated room for going through the, or, or having the Staiku scanner. So this is something you may want to consider as well. Um, but it makes for a very, int not intimate, but private, calm, non-invasive experience uh, where people can truly feel comfortable because they're about to see their body in a whole new way. So having a dedicated room where they can be free of distraction and you know, certainly don't want to be out in the open necessarily um, where other members might be staring or, or gawking, but um, a dedicated room for body scanning is, is certainly something that many, many clubs across the country and the world are making a reality. Um, <clears throat> And then, you know, data is going to be there to support the results, delivering a new set of KPIs to test the value of your model. Um, each quarter, each month, you'll be able to see how your entire membership base in aggregate is doing. And you're going to be seeing when they make significant progress. So um, uh, thank you so much for joining the webinar today. I really appreciate you taking some time here on this Thursday to learn a little bit about technology and uh, where the club industry is headed. Um, I am now going to open the floor up for questions and I'm going to see if Raj is on and wants to join in here. But um, before I do that, if you have any, if you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to email me directly at my work email. Or if you have any questions about Staiku, feel free to, email Staiku directly. So um, with that being Thank said. You, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and un unmute Raj so that he can, he can talk. I, right, Raj, you should be able to speak to the group now. Hey, thanks a lot, Rachel. And so a big thanks to uh, Club Solutions for putting this together and a big thanks to um, Treetop Growth Strategy and Bill. I think it was an excellent presentation, very informative um, around VR, a lot of exciting, exciting, um, you know, uh, developments in the VR space as it relates to fitness. And it was nice to get a, an overview of a lot of what the different companies are doing and uh, 
just a great presentation. Um, you know, I'm available here for any questions too. If anybody has any, you know, a couple of points that I'll make is, you know, a lot of these trends that we're seeing around VR inside of fitness and whatnot really play well into, uh, you know, the mandate that we all have into building a great experience inside of a club and how important that is, right? And, you know, if you recall, you know, still 40% of, of, of people are, are getting their workouts outside of a gym, right? And so anything we can do to create a differentiable experience, not just with regards to the studio down the street, right? But just with regards to the main competition, which is working out at home or working on outside, right? Um, getting people to realize that, hey, it may be worthwhile joining a gym in the first place um, is a great, great customer acquisition strategy. And I think VR is, is an, a way to build a new audience and build a stickier audience, you know? Uh, and I think a lot of the equipment, um, you know, that, that Bill has showed, uh, showed us, and I think there's what we're gonna see is that, you know, the VR experience is, is gonna be very limited in the home, right? It's gonna require somebody to purchase a lot of equipment, right? And some of the higher end equipment, and you'll see this differentiating in, in, uh, over time, you'll see that the better experiences will be pricier equipment. Um, you know, the better experience will require more room, right? And people may not have that room. So they're gonna be constrained by price. They're gonna be constrained by space. So ultimately that'll allow a club to really capitalize on that and say, well, where are people gonna get these experiences if they can't afford, you know, to buy the equipment themselves or they don't have the space for the equipment themselves? Well, the first uh, point of entry for that, the first, um, you know, opportunity for that is, is a fitness club, right? Uh, to provide that experience. So I think it's, it's gonna end up playing well in the favor uh, of, of a club. Um, it's gonna have, in reality, I think, and again, this is my, you know, these are my uh, speculations, but, you know, from what I can see, I feel very strongly that it actually is not going to be a concern that people will do this at home and actually it'll be the reverse. It'll be something people will really look for a retail experience or they'll look for something outside of their house because they frankly just don't have the space and, and the money. Um, and it, this fits into what we believe here at Saiku and around 3D body scanning that it's all about elevating the experience inside of a club. If you can build a great experience, which is results driven, you know, this is the reason why 40% of the market's there are boutiques, right? And it's because when we involve large group training, small group training, group exercise, ultimately, you know, we enable high interval, inten high intensity interval training. We get your heart rate to a region where you're going to burn fat. And majority of people today have a fat problem. Right. And so, you know, the goal lines are changing and therefore the club is transforming. And this is another way for a club to provide results driven experiences, you know. Awesome. Thanks for so that. So an exciting. Topic. Sure. Absolutely. Well, we don't have any other questions that have come through. Um, is there anything else that either of you would like to share with the audience before we end the webinar? Nothing for me, but thank no, you so much for having me on. And uh, I hope everyone learned something today and I hope everyone gives VR a try and 3D body scanning a try. What about you, Raj? You yeah, just a, a big thanks everyone who attended. I hope we were able to uh, spark some, some ideas in, in the audience there and maybe some uh, experiments hopefully in 2018. And if you uh, discover anything and you want to add, you know, please do write to us. Let us know uh, if you tried something with VR, if you invested in, and you had some success or you, or you discovered some challenges. We'd love to learn more. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone again and everyone have a great rest of the week and weekend. Thank you. Off here.